All right, how's it going everyone? This is part five. Um, in this video, we're gonna be doing both the LCD assembly as well as the heat bed and the PCU. Uh, both of these I found pretty easy, so I was able to get them all down into a 13 minute video. Uh, I was able to work on some other people's Prusa MK3 who had some trouble. So with that, I'll be adding some of the information that I got there into this video. Um, I will probably only have about one more make video and then I'm going to do a tips and tricks which I think will be particularly useful for those of you who have never actually put together anything computer related before. Um, I noticed there was a lot of issues on torque and how tight to get the screws and there was definitely failures that I saw occur if you weren't able to torque it all away. So keep a lookout for those videos. Um, they should be coming up shortly. I've improved my setup so that I can hopefully publish some of these videos a little bit faster than I have been in the past. Uh, my goal is to get them all out before the Christmas season. If you're just joining, uh, the way we do it here uh, is we first we show a slide that's basically taken from the Prusa website. Um, and then we'll put that slide up to the top left corner so you know about where we are. Uh, I don't add music or anything, so if... If you want, just skip to the section that you want. You can hear me say stuff in the beginning, and then the video will just keep kind of playing until we get to the next slide. Um, if you want me to change up the style at all, leave a comment, and I will be happy to do that. I I am not sure of the best way to do this. As, as, a, as you may notice, I'm still fairly new. So getting started, um, again, this is Heatbed PSU and the LCD assembly. Um, the... You know, first two steps, you know, organizing the parts, uh, fairly straightforward. Make sure your tools are ready. As you can see, I generally put my tools in this nice um, order on the nice bottom left, just so that when we do start, you know, I don't have to go search around for them. Um, if you're looking to skip ahead, on the left-hand side are all the timestamps of which step um, and what those steps are. Okay, the next step is checking the LCD cables. One of the things that you really want to check for here, and, and I understand the video quality gets kind of bad, that has something to do with the rendering that was done. But what you're really looking for is the one or the two lines. Just make sure that they're put into the right spot. Mine was done correctly um, when they sent it in. So the next step is assembling these LCD supports. Uh, you kind of saw I started it there. Uh, in this case, I had some trouble because I definitely wasn't paying attention to the orientation when I did it. I put it together correctly, I think, the first time. I then decided, nope, I did it incorrectly. Look, this is me showing you how correct or incorrect I did it. I put it back on. I put it together. And you're going to see me slap my head and realize I'm a complete and utter idiot. There we go. Yep, and so putting them back on, put them correctly. The LCD cover itself snapped on. Uh, there was no problems here. It, you know, is fit perfectly. Um, just make sure the orientation's right. You don't want those cables going through the wrong way, otherwise you'll get some pinch there, and you want to make sure that they don't break. Now, one thing that I've seen is what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the LCD assembly exactly where it shows um, in the instructions, but I have seen people put this separate. So if you have a case, they make these wires that connect to the LCD assembly quite long so that you actually have some room to put them in a place that that uh, is much useful. For the most part, I, I use Raspberry Pi with Octoprint on mine. Um, I'll show how to do that a little bit later, but uh, you know, using this is, is really useful when when um, you need to do a lot of the calibration, you can get really up close instead of trying to do it far away on a computer. All right, so when you screw these in, just make sure you don't over torque. Um, I'm going to have a separate video on tips and tricks that show exactly how to torque something like this. If you've never, if you're not sure what torque is and how to tighten screws, um, what we consider tight versus over tight, um, I'll go through that in a later, a later video. So we're actually at step seven here. I just didn't put the the picture up. Um, 
here we're just moving in the nuts and then we're screwing it down. Now we're going to prep it for assembly. And so to do that, we want to get to the back of the L uh, back of the the printer. Uh, so we just turn it around. Um, you're gonna to need to turn it back around again later when you're doing the heat bed. But for now, I found this to be the easiest. Uh, one thing to note is if you just saw what I did there is I didn't have the stands put on from the very beginning. I waited to do it later. Uh, I, I found that when I was building this earlier, those stands would come apart and get in the way. So I left them off, but now is the time to do it. And you want to do this now because otherwise the LCD will fit directly, uh, it'll sit on the table and it will torque up or it'll bend up. And you don't want to do that just in case it, it will snap off. So put those on before you actually put the LCD unit onto the printer. Um, there I'm just checking to see what car alarm is going off. It was not mine. And then once you got that on, um, you know, you can see that I kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but once you tighten it down, the last step here is just putting the knob onto the LCD assembly. Um, just fits right on, no problems. And for the most part, that would be it. Really easy. Didn't take long at all. And next we move on to the heat bed and PSU assembly. Um, this one was a little bit trickier. It shows as moderate. Um, I do agree with that. And we'll go through it. I'll, I'll explain some of the tricky parts with it. A lot of it has to do with the magnetic bed and some of these um, parts you put on. Uh, for my case, I have the one on the circled in green. Um, this means that I need to actually go through and assemble it. Uh, if you have the one that was circled in, I think that was fuchsia, pink, whatever color, purple, uh, you can skip to step six. In my case, this was already attached. Um, what I'm going to end up doing is I end up putting the cord on. And as you can see, I have a magical little puppy running around. I think he wanted some of my treats. Um, there he is. What a, what a beautiful creature. He is the best helper in the entire world. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put these leads on. And once we put them on, we're going to intertwine the wire that's already there. And in this case, I use my needle nose pliers to keep it in place for quite a while. Uh, later on, you're going to see it pop off. There's a reason for this. And then I have to go back and retwine it together. But for the most part, um, you can just... I, I kind of braided it so that they all stayed together. So here I am finishing putting those on. Right now we're getting closer to step five. Um, this step is really just to show you to bring those two leads in a little bit. Um, when you assemble the, I think it's a sleeve that you put over that, you're gonna need those bending in. Uh, you can see the sleeves. Um, you need those bending in so that you can actually fit the sleeves so that they're gonna be flush. So make sure you do this. I had trouble getting those sleeves flush on there. Uh, you're going to see that coming up later. There was a few other things that I did um, to get it so that you could actually screw them in. This is the sleeve here. That, um, oh, sorry, it's not a sleeve. It's a heat bed cable cover. Uh, in this case, this is what you need to put on, and that's why you need to bend those in a little bit. I apologize for misnaming it. Now make sure that when you're doing this, you're not stretching that thermistor cable. You wanna make sure that it's not gonna come loose at any point in time. 
So uh, you're going to need to be able, this bed moves around quite a bit, so you don't want it too loose and you don't want it too taut. Um, I, you know, when you do the proper cable management coming up, it'll really just show you how to go through that step by step. Now, I found this particularly frustrating. Um, getting this part on was easy. Uh, you know, once you bend those things in, they'll fit just like a charm. Um, this is the proper cable management where I was telling you that I basically braid them together and you'll see that I braid it and I will end up putting the needle nose pliers at the end to kind of secure it so they don't come undone. There they go. Now getting the sleeve on, you know, that's, it's basically the same step that we've done before. Um, you want to keep it a few centimeters. If you don't know centimeters, that's, you know, 2.54 centimeters is an inch. So do it about an inch off, maybe a little less. And then what you're going to do is once you tighten it, you're going to want to put it in there and you want to get this thing flush. You want it to basically hold that sleeve in place so you can do the rest of the cable. Now, I found this particularly difficult. Um, basically the sleeve was a little thick. What I would say is get it really nice and small when you put it in there and then sink it down. In my case, you can see, like I tried to use needle nose pliers to kind of crush it a little bit. Um, what you want to make sure absolutely is that you are not pinching any wires. Pinching the wires can break them in the long run and then your whole heat bed system is, is not likely to work. So just do whatever you can to do, get it flush, but just don't pinch the wires and make sure everything is coming out of that um, plate correctly. Now I end up uh, struggling with this for another 30, 40 seconds here. So if you wanna skip ahead to Timestamp 938, that's where we start doing the final wrap on this. And I'm going to go ahead and skip the video. Um, I don't do anything really special here. And now we're at 938. So now I'm putting on the heat, uh, the wrap. Uh, this is the same process we did before, you know, just get it in there and just circle, uh, uh, start turning it. I think you might be able to just turn it on slowly, work its way in there. I'm not, I, I really, kinda, to be honest with you, struggled on this one more so than the one on the um, extruder. But, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Now, just get it nice and tight. And we're basically done with it there. Um, next steps will be just putting this heat bed on. Now make sure you pull out all of these screws and they're not really washers, I, they're basically spacers. And what I do here is exactly the way Mr. Prusa, um, actually I don't really remember his name, uh, what he uh, suggested doing in his documentation using that Allen wrench is what really helps align everything with the hole, the spacer, the the heat bed, and the hole. And this allows me to get my first screw in. Now, I don't tighten it all the way. So I, and I recommend you do it, use the angle that this Allen wrench is in. Do the short bit up and then do the long bit down. And, and this is going to be in a separate torquing video that, that I show. And that's torquing, not twerking, um, because nobody wants to see me do that. And so... What you're going to want to do is don't even tighten it. Just just get it down so it kind of feels like it's slowing down. Um, or just leave and leave a little bit of space. But you just want to make sure that the heat bed is not going to come off. Because in the next steps, you're going to be going through and you're going to be putting all the other spacers in there. Now, I used this method right here. So basically what I would do is I would grab one of those spacers. Um, a lot of times it would stick up on the metal bit. So I just kind of forcibly slide it towards uh, the hole. You want to make sure you're not hitting anything. You don't want to break anything under there. And then I'd use that Allen wrench technique to drive it through the hole so that I could get the screw in and it would sync up directly with the, the thread on the bottom. Um, and so you go through and this is kind of a pain because I think you have to do, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have to do about nine of them. Um, 
Again, make sure you do not tighten them all the way. It is very important not to do that right away. Um, the the person's Prusa, I don't know why I'm telling you that. The person's uh, uh, 3D printer that I helped fix, that they weren't tightened all the way and they actually failed the calibration test quite a bit. Um, we ended up having to pull them pull it all the way off and restart again. So if you end up failing the calibration multiple times and you can't understand why, try pulling that heat bed off and putting it back on and retightening it in the exact way this next step is gonna show us, okay? Um, tightening it any other way, you could warp the bed in a way that would cause a failure to occur when you're doing the calibration. Okay, here I am just putting the last one in. And we only got about 10 seconds until the next step. Okay, so this is the ordering I was talking about. Again, uh, make sure that you, I'm gonna go back so that you can look at this. Oh, there we go. So make sure you do it in this order. So tighten these uh, outside. So if you look at the second diagram on the top right, it shows you which ones to do. Now, I always tighten everything in a star pattern. So that means I'm, I basically uh, tighten these yellow ones first. Now, if you're better about it, I don't know if I did it. I, I'll take a look in this video, but I would recommend doing the top left, the bottom right, then the top right, then the bottom left, then you do those center ones that they showed you. Um, and I do that in a star pattern as well, and then the middle one. And the reason you want to do that is it's kind of like your car. You know, you just want to make sure it doesn't lift up on the edges. If you do all one side and then you do the other, it'll kind of maybe bow in the middle. So just I always do star patterns, basically any electrical equipment that I'm putting together. Um, you know, CPU, heat sinks, it's the same thing. Uh, the PSU, this was easy. Um, basically, those two little bits that we put on in the beginning, the PSU mounts, we're finally getting to those. Uh, you just screw it on. It was really nothing complicated here. And... Um, the reality is this is about the end of the video. Um, we got about 20 more seconds of me putting this together, but realistically this, um, the hardest part was just getting that heat bed on and making sure everything was done correctly, uh, as well as getting that, uh, part for the, uh, um, the heat bed wires. Other than that, uh, you know, we got the look forward to actually hooking up the computer next, and after that we'll have an working up and running 3d printer all right well i hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to see some of the other ones come out feel free to subscribe and or um like this video if you have suggestions or if there's something that you want me to discuss feel free to put a comment and let me know um, otherwise i hope you've enjoyed this and i will talk to you next video thank you